Yes. De defining a derivative, mm -hmm. uh, derivative is something in simple language which derives its value from the underlying. Absolutely. It, it does not have its own value. Absolutely. Right? You go to a market to purchase something, it has a value attached to it. True. But uh, a derivative is something which has a value but it derives its value from the other thing. Right. right, and that, that is the basic definition of a derivative. Basic definition. It derives its value from an underlying. It can be anything. It can be anything. In fact, I think it started from uh, the weather. Uh, yeah, weather derivatives. Weather derivatives. Uh, agricultural commodities. You have derivatives in on almost everything. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, starting from here, we'll uh, study about the legal definition, which is defined under the section 25, 45, 45 UA yeah. of the Securities Regulation Act. Yes. Uh, uh, def derivative is a security derived from a debt instrument, share, loan, risk instrument or a contract for difference or any other form of security. Absolutely. Right. So any other form of security could be anything. It derives its value from one or more basic variable called underlying. Right. Such an underlying can be an asset, asset and index, index value, value or even a reference, reference rate. In our currency futures, it's a reference rate. How does the question come on derivatives? They, do they ask the definition of derivative or how, how does it work? Uh, yeah, basic definition and uh, in the form of an example. For example, in currency futures, what is the underlying? When I okay. say derivative derives its value from the underlying, what could be the underlying? The currency would be the underlying. The no, exchange rate is the, the underlying. No, in, in currency futures. In currency futures, the exchange rate. Right? The exchange rate, yes, naturally. That's an underlying. Absolutely. So, derivatives are in the form of a contract. Very important thing, they are a type of a contract mm -hmm. with price and time specifically mentioned in the contract. Price and time specific. We'll discuss in this in uh, a detail. detail. Yeah. Settled at future date at a predetermined price mutually agreed by parties. So important thing is that they are settled at future date and the price is already determined and mutually agreed by both the parties signing Absolutely. the contract. Right. So we'll have a look at different type of derivative products. We'll look at the forwards, forwards we'll look at the futures, futures options. options, warrants, leaps are long term equity anticipation schemes. Let uh, me just write down long term equity anticipation schemes. Baskets, which are a form of index, and uh, swaps. We have uh, already covered swaps. Covered swaps. In, in I think video number four or something. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, perfect. So, so should we go ahead with with this? Uh, we will basically define these all these terms, uh, not uh, in detail. Uh, but we'll touch base with them right now. Yeah, within the slide or some other slide. slide. Uh, okay, forwards so we have already discussed. So let's let's just look at it. Uh, let's do a little quick thing of forwards. Forward is a contract settling anything uh, more than t plus three days. T plus three or more than that. T plus three or more, more than that. So Online basically, settlement. T plus three or more. Yes. Uh, next was our future. Let's look at futures. Future contract. Yeah. Uh, it is same as forward contract, with a slight difference that it is it has a standard settlement. The terms same. of the agreement are standardized. Same as forward, the terms are standardized. Yes. And that's and why it happens. And that's why it happens on an exchange. On an exchange, right. So forward is basically a OTC instrument, and futures is a exchange traded instrument. So this will be an yeah. OTC. Yes. Product. OTC instrument. OTC instrument. Next we have futures, uh, sorry, options. Options. Uh, similar in fashion like forwards and futures, mm -hmm. but uh, with a slight difference. Uh, we'll explain the difference in detail later. Difference to be explained later in the module okay uh, if we can go back to the previous slide let's just have a look at uh, warrants 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 leaves baskets and swaps yeah uh, warrants are uh, basically a note attached at with your security which basically gives you an option warrants are what you're saying are notes attached yeah notes attached, notes attached to security attached to security which gives you an option Good. that option can be of any type right like uh, yes. converting your shares an option 
of example converting a share converting a share redeeming a share How does this work? You like to, I mean, a little with an example. Uh, if you can take an example of a bond, okay, which is issued with a warrant, mm -hmm. wherein there is an option with the bondholder mm -hmm. to convert. So you're saying bond so can be converted into an equity, perhaps? Uh, not exactly. A bond issuer has an option whether he want to call back that bond within a specific time period or not. So for example, if a bond issuer issues a warrant mm -hmm. that he has the right that after five years, he can call back or buy back that bond. Okay, so you're saying bond can be con uh, called back, no, called not back, converted. Not converted. Called back. Can be called back. Or can be redeemed back. Can be called back or redeemed back. After a stipulated period. After, let's say, X time or which is the stipulated period. So there uh, the bond issuer has an option within. It's okay, so, so the basically bond a type of an option. So you're saying that this when he does this the bond issuer has an option to call back the bond. Option because he is easy to do the with a warrant. Hmm. Okay. So what you're saying is that uh, let's say a bond issuer says that okay I can I can I can uh, call, back uh, call back my bond. So after, after let's say years, period, five years. So he's he's issued that bond with a warrant. With a warrant. That, that, that's how a warrant typically works. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Let, let's go back to our uh, PPD and see leaps. Yeah, leaps. Uh, nothing much in detail. Leaps are uh, basically types of options with uh, long term maturity. Okay. So you're saying these are again long term maturity products. Yeah. Long term maturity. And there are types of options. Yes. And we have to do options in detail in any case. So yeah, I'm quite right. sure that uh, the students would be able to gauge this better once we have completed the options. options. So baskets, we've done in detail. We have, uh, yeah. Baskets are nothing but like an index. Mm -hmm. So for example, we are talking about an index like a Sensex or okay. an FT. Mm -hmm. which represents a group of securities that's why it's called a basket okay so so you're saying a basket is a derivative product which is a composition of a lot of yes, products yes. so whenever you uh, see in the market uh, people trading uh, sensex or nifty right uh, you basically they are trading a basket of securities absolutely right so understood yeah. and swaps we've done swaps uh, yeah, we've we done, done. Uh, in one of the previous videos yes. a perfect so, so if you want to explain it uh, again We'll, uh, we said that derivatives are something which derive its value from the underlying right. and all these products derive that their value from an underlying. Right. And for example, we are talking about a basket like say for example Sensex right. which in itself has nothing but it derived its value from the shares which, is the asset. which are composed you know, right. while making the index. Right. And for Sensex we use uh, 30 shares right. to compose an index. So it basically derives the value from all those 30 okay, shares. Yes, absolutely. That's why it's called a derivative product. Absolutely. So should we go ahead? Yeah. We'll move on to the next slide. Uh, so basically a theoretical slide where we'll uh, understand the growth drivers of derivatives. Uh, derivatives were launched in uh, 2001 in India mm -hmm. and within a span of less than 10 years right. the volumes have overtaken that of cash segment. The cash market. market. Yeah. yeah. So these are the basic factors why there has been a huge uh, volumes in derivatives. Right. Uh, increased volatility in financial markets. Basically derivatives are instruments to hedge your uh, exposures. Mm -hmm. So whenever there is huge volatility in the spot market or cash market, right. you will normally see a uh, huge volumes in uh, derivatives market. Nice because, because people would like to hedge their risk. Hedge their risk right? Absolutely. Increased integration of national and international financial markets. This is one of the primary reasons for growth drivers of derivatives. Okay. Derivatives were quite prevalent in developed economies like US and uh, Europe. Right. And since uh, we have seen that global markets are more aligned now. Absolutely. So derivatives are definitely more in uh, fashion. You can say that. So you're saying improvement in communication facilities and transaction, transaction costs have also uh, caused a growth, in, growth in the yeah. derivative segment. Development and development of, of sophisticated risk management tools, providing better risk management strategies, strategies. 
That's another reason. Yeah. And uh, innovation in the derivatives market leading to higher returns, yeah, reduced risk, and reduced transaction yeah. cost compared with other financial, financial markets. Market. So, yes. so this is something which is more or less theoretical. I, yeah, I don't think we need to get into, into micro details. detailing of every yeah, single point. Not necessary. Right. So let's uh, let's look at the market players now. Yes, market players. Uh, mostly all these uh, these three market players are prevalent in all the markets whenever you talk about equity or a commodity market or a currency market so likewise uh, these are hedges right. hedges are people who are on a lookout to minimize their risk right so I then there are hedges will always be people who are trying to hedge risk hedge so risk. That, that's that's how it comes from so yes. they're looking at ways of minimizing their risk minimizing their risk yes the second category which uh, typically is typically we're looking at exporters and importers exporter who, who are major players of yes. uh, hedges in the in the currency uh, market currency market right yeah. the next category is uh, very important yeah uh, speculators in the market speculators somebody who is very important the yeah. yeah very important to pinpoint about speculators uh, many would uh, raise the question that uh, since it's a speculative activity it's not uh, Legal or yeah, legal. But yeah. Uh, whenever you are talking of somebody who is looking to minimize the risk, he can only minimize his risk when there is somebody else in the market who is willing to take that risk. Absolutely. Right? So there has to be a specific uh, category which is known as speculators who are on a lookout to take risk to maximize and, the returns. Yeah, maximize the return plus to make this market a complete market. And so when you have only hedges in this market, this market cannot function. And also makes the market because typically, you know, only if you have only risk, poor risk appetite people like an hedger, yeah. that's it, the market will not be there. Somebody has to take the Somebody risk. Somebody has to take the risk. And they Speaking therefore are very, very important for very the very market. Important. Uh, and the third category is uh, the hedges. Yeah. Uh, they are very smart people who are always on a lookout to earn a risk-free rate of return. So what they typically do is they try to cash in the mispricing in the market. Right. Mis you know, pricing. the market is never uh, fairly priced. Right. So whenever there is some mispricing in the markets, arbitrages come in and uh, they take the benefit of this mispricing. Plus, they bring an equilibrium to the market because whenever there is mispricing and arbitrages step in, they 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 sort of provide stability to the market. Right. I mean a little bit more perhaps arbitrages I guess uh, so when you're looking at arbitrages yeah so for example uh, if there is a security which is trading at let's say, let's say X security trades at 10 rupees 10 rupees in one market uh, in let's say or let's say we should break this down into two markets yes this is market one and market two and uh, it's been trading here at 10.1 and here let's say 10.2 so this arbitrager would buy, buy here this market and, and sell, sell here so what happens that when he starts buying in this market right. the price of the security would definitely rise right yeah as per the laws of demand and supply absolutely the price of this security would rise in market one absolutely and the, the constant price selling in market two will the lead price to would come down so, so, so at, at some, some point, point of time the, the markets will convert yes that's also very important to yeah. know and therefore arbitrage opportunities are seldom and rare yeah, seldom and there are arbitrages who are specifically looking for such opportunities. Yes. Same thing also happens when you are looking at a future, uh, the, the cash market and derivatives market. Yes, it happens in the market. That's why uh, I have already pointed out that uh, they are very important to bring the equilibrium in the market. Okay, so for example, in the same example how this will work is that this is an X, it's trading at uh, the cash market at let's say 10. Mm -hmm. And the derivative at let's say uh, nine Instead point of derivative, eight. you can say that uh, the, the futures, futures market. market uh, right. So let's say the futures market. It's trading at nine point eight. So this gentleman will buy here. Buy in futures. So he'll buy end up buying here. And, and he'll end up selling here. Selling here. And again, the prices okay. will converge. Yeah. So, so that's how typically an arbitrage happens. Either it's happening between two, mispricing between the two markets or mispricing between the cash and the derivative yeah, segment. Yeah. Basically, cash and derivative markets are also uh, two different markets. Absolutely. So, let's, let's just have a look at... So, all these three uh, market participants are very important to make a market a wholesome market. 